In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use the Mini Lab 3 with FL Studio and my custom workflow, and then I'm gonna show you how to get it set up for yourself. The method I'm gonna show you is sure to make it faster, more seamless, and a lot more fun to produce. The method I'm gonna show you allows you to use your drum pads like you would on an MPC or traditional drum machine. So you can have a melody or a sample playing, and then you can lay your drums right on top of it without having to change channels and without having to use the FPC. With this template, your drums can stay in their own channels, you have your MIDI data separate, and it makes it really easy when it's time to go to the mixing process. Before we get into it, if you're new here, this is Al B, and I make a lot of videos on music production tips software and gear if that's something you're interested in please consider subscribing it really helps the channel without further ado let's get into it yes sir with my custom workflow you're going to be able to tap out your drums and whatever samples or sounds you have assigned to the channels you're going to be able to control and trigger from the keyboard let me show you So every pad is assigned to a different channel. You have two banks. If I switch to the second bank, it just goes to the second eight channels. So really you have 16 different channels you can control from the drum pads here. In this example, I already have a sample loaded inside of the playlist and then I have a pattern underneath it and I'm gonna loop record and just lay drums on top of the pattern. You can get this sample for free. I'm going to include a link in the description to where you can download my free sample packs and this sample will be in there. So as you see, I very quickly lay my drums on top of it. I could do a lot more, but I think you guys get the idea and get why this workflow is much better in my opinion. And I'm gonna show you now how you can take it a step further. Now that I have my drums actually laid out, I can just highlight all of my channels. I can simply press Control L on my keyboard and boom, automatically each one has its own mixer track. And now I'm ready for the next phase in mixing and I can even, you see every drum is already in its own channel. I think you can see why I like doing it this way. And now I'm gonna show you how to get it set up for yourself. The first thing you need to do to get this set up for yourself is download and install the Albi template. I'm gonna put a link on screen and in the description to where you can get it. Heads up, it's not free, but I do offer support to those needing more help with their setup in general. Plus I send out free exclusive samples and kits to those that support by downloading. With all that included, I do think you're gonna find it totally worth it. Once you've downloaded the template, you're gonna right click it and you're going to extract all if you're on Windows, extract. And now you can see the two files inside of it. If you're on a Mac, all you have to do is just double click the zip file and it will automatically extract it for you. Once you've extracted the files, you're going to then go to arteria.com, go to support, downloads and manuals, download and install MIDI Control Center. Once you've downloaded and installed MIDI Control Center, open it up and then you're simply going to go to import. You're going to find where you save the Albi template. Go into the folder. And from here, you're going to open up albfstudio.minilab3. Open. Open up the device settings file that I also included in the zip folder. So go to device settings, go to import, and then you're going to see albdevicesettings.minilab3 underscore ds. And ds stands for device settings. Open that up. Now that you've downloaded and extracted the template, you have it imported inside of the MIDI Control Center, you're gonna actually do Store 2. Make sure you have User 1 selected and you have the Albi FL Studio template selected and you're gonna hit Store 2. And then you saw a data transfer happen and it should now be on your keyboard. The way that you check that it's on your keyboard is pressing Shift and then press Program and cycle through and you should see User 1 Program pop up. 
So it's going to go Arturia, DAW, and then user one, which lets you know you have now activated the user one template. And in our case, that is the Alb FL Studio template and your pad should be purple. And that way, you know, you actually loaded the template. If you press shift and pad, you're going to see the pads turn green. And that way, you know, you also have your second bank loaded and everything looks good. Once you do that, you should be good to go. One more note, make sure you actually upgrade your firmware. If you have any kind of issue that you see, the first thing I would suggest is that you upgrade your firmware. I did have an issue or two when I first started until I upgraded the firmware. Also, if you open up the MIDI control center and you see an error stating it can't find or doesn't recognize the controller, make sure you have nothing else open like FL Studio that may be trying to actually send MIDI data to the keyboard. Now that we stored it to the keyboard, we've made sure it's on the actual keyboard. We're going to close it out and go to FL Studio. Once you're in the FL Studio, go to Options, MIDI Settings, or you can press F10. You're going to come make sure Mini Lab 3 MIDI is enabled. By default, it'll go to port 236. That's fine. And then on the input section below, you're going to go to Mini Lab 3 MIDI. Make sure it's enabled. It also goes to port 236 by default, and that's fine. Make sure controller type is Arturia Mini Lab 3 user. And then you're going to set your Omni Preview channel to 12. This is critical. A lot of people miss this. Make sure you set the Omni Preview channel to 12. Once you do that, you should be good to go. I'm going to close it out and test it out. Again, make sure you press Shift Pad until you go to User 1. Once you're in User 1, you now should be able to tap out your drums. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you're looking for some additional help in setting up your MIDI keyboard, such as configuring the modulation wheel or manually assigning the knobs and faders to different things in FL Studio, I have a couple of videos on that as well, and I'm going to put links in the description where you can check that out. If you found it helpful, please consider subscribing and make sure you hit that like button. Until next time, this is Al B, and we are out. Yes, sir.